Welcome to today's tutorial where we will be demonstrating how to create a Google Drive clone using AWS S3 object storage. But not only that, this same method will also work with other S3 compatible storage providers. We'll show you how to connect to a AWS S3 storage, list buckets and objects, preview, download, delete files, upload files to a AWS S3 bucket and even generate a secure shareable link. All of this, with just a few lines of code. And the best part? With the power of chat GPT, we'll be able to generate all the necessary code in minutes, and script for this video too. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, this tutorial is for you. In this demo, we will be running the application on localhost, but connected to cloud storage. The application will display a list of buckets, each with its own rules for access and visibility. In this demonstration, we will not be focusing on security, but if you are interested in learning more, please let us know in the comments and we can create another video to cover that topic. We will begin by clicking on a bucket to view the list of all objects stored within. Through the use of code, we can organize these objects into folders, despite the flat file structure of object storage. Next, we will demonstrate how to upload a new file to the bucket. We will select the desired bucket, select the file, and click Submit. Once the file has been uploaded, we will refresh the page to view the newly added file. Additionally, we will show how to view file properties and delete files from the bucket to free up space. We will also show how to preview and download files, as well as share them securely with others on the internet. By clicking on a file we can download it or click on button to copy link to the clipboard, and we will open a new window and paste the link in the address bar to view or download the file. Finally, we will point out that by using our own bucket, we have full control over our data, unlike when using other large corporations. We can even add encryption to our files, but that is beyond the scope of this video. Before we start coding, there are a few things that need to be in place. Firstly, you will need to have Node.js installed on your system. Next, you will need to have a bucket, whether it's local or in the cloud. You can also host Minio locally using Docker if you prefer. Lastly, you will need your API secret, API key, and the region of the bucket. With these prerequisites in place, we can now begin coding and bringing this project to life. To initialize our Node.js project, we can use GitHub Codespaces or create a new directory on our local machine and open it in VS Code. Once the code spaces have started, we can use the integrated terminal to initialize the node JS project using the command npm init y. Next, we will install the required dependencies for the project such as express.env, AWS SDK, Multer, and Multer S3. We will also install a dev dependency, node mon which will allow us to automatically restart the server whenever changes are made to the code. In the project directory, we will create a new file called env to store our secrets. Pushing keys to a public repository is not a good idea, as anyone with access to the keys would have full access to the bucket and potentially the entire cloud account, resulting in potentially large bills. In the package, json file, we will add start and dev scripts. Also in this file we will change Multer S3 from 3.0.1 to 2.10 and reinstall the dependencies using npm install command as 3.0.1 will not work with AWS SDK 2.1. We will create a new file called server. In this file, we will import our dependencies and initialize the AWS SDK with our keys and secrets. We will also initialize the Express app. Now. We will use GPT to generate the code for our node. JS Express app that uses the AWS SDK and Multer S3 to list all the buckets, list all the items in a bucket when a bucket name is selected, show file preview and properties, delete files, and get a shareable link. All the code for this project will be linked in the description with a markdown file explaining the code, feel free to star and fork it or use it as a reference. If you still have any doubts, please feel free to comment or raise an issue on GitHub. Once we have the code generated, we will copy and paste the code for the home route into our server.
JS file in VS Code. We will do the same for the other routes such as listing items in a bucket. Previewing files. Feel free to pause video at any moment. Deleting files. And getting a secure shareable link. We will also copy and paste the middleware function for uploading files and the code for the UI to upload files and post them to the bucket. Finally, we will add a line to start listening for the Express app. Once all the code is in place, we can test our application and make any necessary adjustments. To run the code we generated from GPT, we will first open the terminal and run the dev script by using command npm run dev. We will wait for the script to launch. Once the application is running, we can go to the browser and navigate to localhost, your port or in my case, I will click on open in browser button. Let me zoom in for you. We will see a list of buckets in our object storage. However, we realize that we are not able to click on them to view the items inside. To fix this, we will add a link to the name of each bucket to link to the files page. We will go back to the browser, refresh, and now we should be able to view all the files in the bucket. Next, we realize that we still can't view the items in the bucket, so we will add a link to the file preview page to the item names. We will go back, hit refresh and now we should be able to see all the images in the bucket. We will also realize that we don't have a button to generate a secure shareable link and delete items. We will add them easily under the header. After adding, we will refresh the page and try to get a shareable link by clicking on the button and share or click on this link. The link should be working for the next 60 seconds. We will also try to delete an item, but we will get an error. We will check the code and realize that we have made a mistake. We will edit the path and method as the browser only support get and post methods and redirect to the bucket page. After editing the code, we will refresh the page and hit delete. We will be redirected to the bucket page. We will also realize that there is no button to upload items, so we will add a link on the home page to the upload route. After adding the link, we will refresh the page, hit upload, select the bucket, select a file and click upload. The file should be successfully uploaded, and we will go back to check. And that's it. We have a complete project to upload, delete, share, list files, and view buckets. It's important to note that this project is not a complete application and there are features that are missing or can be added to make it more robust. Currently, the code is tested only with text and images. Other file types can be uploaded but not viewed. There is no authentication of any kind for the front end. This project can be made production ready with replication, backup, versioning and multi-tenancy if you want to share it with friends and family. It can have enterprise level of feature if you put effort into it. But for now, this project is just a starting point for you to build on top of it. As we have seen, our project does not look exactly as we had shown in the introduction, as we have just added some extra CSS that was copied from the GPT. The GitHub link in the description contains the code for the demo that we have made showed an intro and an API version that returns the result in JSON format so that you can use this backend for your front-end code. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button, share with friends, subscribe to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or video suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching until the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.